Hello, everyone, and welcome to the January 2018 community meeting of the ITP2 Transmart Foundation. Uh, as usual, we will record this session and the recording and the, the slide deck will be available on the website within a day or two. Uh, we hold these meetings monthly uh, where we update um, different various aspects of the foundation and our activities, and often we'll have a guest speaker. The agenda today, um, we'll be covering uh, our working groups, PMC updates, uh, and some information on I2B2 training materials, and then end with an open discussion. So I'd like to turn it over to Diane Kia, our executive director. Diane? I just I want to I want to welcome everyone. Thank you um, very much for joining. Um, in, in lovely, lovely January. Um, I, I don't know where you are in the world, but um, we've, been, we've been slammed with cold weather on the Northeast. So I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking it's time for me to go back to California, quite frankly, or, or someplace. Although California has its troubles too. All right. Thank you, Rudy. Sorry um, about that. So, that's okay. So as Rudy said, um, we're going to be really focusing on uh, talking about the working groups, um, a brief PMC update. Um, uh, Marin from Kansas will be uh, talking about ITB2 training. We'll get into that a little bit more um, when I get to her session. And then an open discussion. And we really, you know, we said this last time, we really want this to be an, an open meeting and get ideas about our uh, next agenda um, for next month. So, next slide, Rudy. So the, the theme of this year, the, the thing that we really want to focus on um, moving forward is all about the community. Um, it's really, it, there's some background noise. Is that you, Rudy? I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's, but I'll go on the mute, make sure. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if other people can hear it. Um, but the, the theme of, of of this year is really about the community. It's it's not about the foundation, it's not about the software, it's about what the community, um, what the community needs and how the community can get together and define kind of our, our roadmap and what we're doing. And so as we talked about last time, you know, that one of the things that we um, put together as part of our new members meeting was um, the idea of pulling together specific work groups to focus on, you know, areas, hard areas, areas that that um, everyone struggles with, and really pulling the pulling the people together uh, to talk about solutions and and how we can the, incorporate incorporate that into our roadmap. Um, so, Rudy, go to the the next slide. We'll get into the specifics of these. Did you go forwards or backwards? All right. So the working groups. So so these are the working groups that um, that were proposed out of the member meeting um, training. And th th this is really to include I2B2 in the training offering, ontologies, ETL, um, a common UI, um, case studies, and events. And what I want to do kind of quickly is is show you. So what we sent we did is we sent out a um, a member a, a sign up sheet for the work groups. And we got um, we got we got some good response responses back. I'm I'm hoping that these groups grow, but I want to talk a little bit about these groups, um, who's on the groups, and and kind of the you know how we see these things moving forward. So next slide, Rudy. Okay, so ETL, um, you know, e ETL is a is a um, a challenge. It's it's a challenge on the I two B two side. It's also a challenge on the uh, Transmart side. Um, so we have a, a number of people listed here that have um, signed up to be um, included in the um, uh, the, the working group. Um, our first our first meeting is actually just following this call. Um, uh, where we're going to really try to 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 lay out a um, you know a, an understanding of how um, how this will work. I, I do want to mention um, probably two years ago we had an I two B two. This is prior to the the, the foundation's merging. We had an I two B two meeting at AMIA, and the focus was um, on ETL and. It was great discussion. We had a number of uh, people from different hospitals um, sharing, you know, what they've done around ETL, and also, you know, saying that they would, you know, share their ETL. Um, and it it didn't 
people were very excited, but it, it, it kind of like stopped there because, you know, it was a one-time meeting. I think of by having this working group and getting um, the people listed here and additional people that are interested in it involved, I think we can make some progress and, and really provide a, a, you know, a fantastic, you know, um, uh, you know, asset for, for people to get, to get um, moving quickly. So next slide, Rudy. Uh, this is the ontology working group. Um, I, I'm pretty, I'm excited about this. This is, again, is another just ongoing hard problem. Um, we've got some really, really fantastic um, people that have joined um, this group um, that are, are experts in the area, uh, in this field. And um, every meeting I go to, there's like a few people in the audience that, that you know, that are expert in this area and people kind of glom on to them. So I'm hoping um, that, that this group grows and that we can um, we can publish and, and and make this this area a little bit um, easier as well. Um, this meeting is is uh, on the twenty fifth. So next slide. So the user interface working group people have been um, at least on the I two B two side um, because that's where I come from. People have been you know very interested in um, developing a new um, UI. This particular group is really, I think, although I shouldn't speak for the group because they um, they need to kick it off, but I think this is, is really talking about a common UI that would um, cover both Transmart and I2B2. Um, I think we've, we've got a lot of interest here and I'm, I'm really uh, interested in, in, um, in kicking this off and, and, uh, and seeing what we can come up with. Next slide. So the training working group, so the, um, the three people at the top are um, new. The training working group has really been around for a while. It was, it's been focused on Transmart, and, and most people that have been around the foundation know that, that um, we offer monthly um, Transmart um, training. Um, and it, it's, it's really the, the, the folks at the bottom are the, are the, um, are the people that made this happen. Um, and the people that put their time in every month to offer these trainings and we, you know, we thank them. I think it's a fantastic um, service that they, um, and that they add to the community. We wanted to include um, ITB2 in this group. Um, we haven't actually set up a formal meeting, but um, we do have um, uh, Marin from the University of Kansas uh, Medical Center who will be um, speaking at the end. Um, they, they have done just a fantastic job in laying out an educational um, program for their, um, their medical center. And they have a lot of uh, YouTube videos and a lot of materials that um, they are making available to us. And Maren will walk through uh, what she has available and we'll include it on our website. I really wanna promote that because I, I think it's, it's something that will give people a jump start and really just make it a whole lot easier uh, for people to get going. We're also, uh, Mike Mendez has, um, has, has also offered to create um, technical um, training uh, materials and a technical training course for like how to install um, I2B2, which is, you know, sorely needed. So we're, um, you know, we're excited about that. And next slide. So we put together this case study um, working group. Case, now, making case studies, gathering case studies from dif different organizations for both Transmart and I2B2 is extremely important and will um, help us. I think it'll help other, uh, other people to understand you know, how they can use the system, but it'll also help the foundation in, in um, you know, bringing excitement um, to the to the um, you know our sponsors that that help support the the foundation to keep us going. So um, we Peter Rice was the only one that officially um, signed up for this. I'm going to keep promoting this because I think it's a fairly um, easy working group because most of these case studies have already been developed and it's really just you know reaching out to different organizations and um, pulling things together um, and making that available uh, on our website. Um, so I'm going to, even though one, oh, only one, one person signed up, I'm going to, I'm going to keep promoting this one. So next slide, Rudy. 
Um, the event working group. So this is a, a working group that um, that Rudy actually runs, and this is a, a group that helps us um, put together our um, events and our meetings for the year. Um, the next uh, meeting is is January 18th. So our, our next um, conference is is in June uh, 27th and 28th of June um, at Harvard uh, here in the Boston area, um, and we're going to be focusing on putting together a, uh, a, a top-notch, just fantastic agenda for that um, meeting. Um, but this group also talks about other events. So, so the idea is we're gonna try to get like all of the events for, for a year um, or two, even looking out, uh, you know, uh, the following year uh, to make sure that we have the timing right and we get the right um, keynote speakers and the right, um, the right content. So next slide. Um, so the, just just the two seconds on the working group, the guideline, it's open participation. So anybody in the community can sign up for these working groups. You don't have to be a, a formal member or a partner. Um, the charter has got to be created by, you know, the, the members of the working group. Um, this is about the community. This is not about, you know, Rudy or me or anybody in the foundation or any of the PMC chairs. This is about what do the members really need and how they want to move this forward. Um, you know, self-managing. So somebody's got to take the leadership position um, and, and be the chair and, you know, set goals and objectives. And um, one of the things we want to do is make sure that all the working groups uh, report out at the, the actual member meeting or even maybe uh, our, our meeting in, um, in June at, at Harvard. Um, but so this, this is just this is just kind of a um, kind of a guideline. So next slide, Rudy. Uh, again, if you're interested in signing up for one of these um, working groups, um, we did actually have a, a, a suggestion for a working group for security, but nobody signed up. Um, but anyway, if you're interested in, in any of these working groups, you can um, sign up from our website and um, we'll get you connected to the, that, that group. Next slide. Um, I think we can skip it. I think we, we did these last time. Yeah. Yeah. Working group. Yeah, I can skip that one too. Okay, so we'll have a um, a brief um, a PMC update. Um, Rudy, I'll let you jump in. Okay. Thanks, Dan, for the uh, Transmart PMC. Uh, this is the current membership. Uh, on the PMC, um, you can see it, it spans a um, number of user people from the user community, a number of vendors who are contributing um, to the uh, to the platform. Uh, the group is meeting every other week right now. Our current roadmap uh, is calling for the next. Uh, the, the current release is 16.2. Uh, we've been trying to, to finish up 16.3, which is an, includes Oracle. Uh, in the release, uh, and that, that we're expecting now at the end of February, and we're beginning development on 16.4, which is going to have a, a few uh, in, uh, enhancements uh, and a number of, of updates uh, as we move ahead. We're also working on the 17.1 uh, core release, the, the server side release, uh, which the, it, it will also then end up being uh, our, our large release uh, of the platform later in the year. Uh, there's a, a lot more details on all of these um, that are available. I'm not going to go through that, but um, just to mention, you know, our version 16 uh, is the current version of the platform. This is what uh, is recommended for people. If you're not up to the version 16 yet, you should be moving there. And we will uh, continue to support this for uh, at least another two years, even after the, the next version comes out. So uh, we expect this to be uh, kind of the workhorse version today. Uh, and the, the platform going forward. And as you see, a number of enhancements will be coming uh, through the 2018. Um, the 2000, uh, the larger release is the result of the, the Transmart Pro project uh, that completed uh, early last year. And that brings a number of really exciting enhancements, a number of architectural elements that have been updated. Um, and these, um, these will come uh, later in the year uh, as we roll this ahead. That's kind of where we are. And Things are continuing to uh, to progress um, well with the uh, with the platform. 
Diana, you gonna? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very I'm gonna be pretty brief on this and explain to you. Like I think what we're gonna try to do is is next month have somebody um, from the the ITB two PMC um, go uh, a little bit deeper. But here are the the current members of the ITB two PMC. Next slide. So and here. Here's the only slide. So, so when we just released a 1.7.09C release, just um, uh, the note just went out a couple of minutes ago that had some some bug fixes and some things that were required for um, to support the shrine. So that just went out today. But our next um, major release, um, we're we're gearing up for an April um, time frame. Um, you know, maybe sooner, but we'll we'll see how that goes. And um, again, I'm going to have somebody talk about this in a little bit more detail, but there's two major pieces to this. Um, one is uh, some security changes. Um, we, we had a review from um, the security office at uh, Harvard. Uh, to, they took a very deep dive and uh, they suggested um, that we, we make um, a number of uh, changes to um, to strengthen the security of I2B2, and we decided, um, even though that wasn't on our roadmap, we decided that it would be prudent of us and and really something that um, the community needed to jump in and um, and get those in place. And so those um, those are things we're we're working on right now. Um, the other is, and we've mentioned this before, is uh, a genomics um, component that will allow you to search for uh, you know genomic uh, data. So I um. I will I will leave it there for the I2B2 uh, PMC, and I will um, ask somebody from that group to come back next month and take a little bit of a deeper dive. So next slide, Rudy, you want to you want to mention um, this PMC? Sorry, the I2B2 Transmart PMC is is a the, the group that um, Paul Viak is leading. Uh, he's uh, been expanding the PMC, as you can see here. A number of, of people are, are have joined from uh, different um, parts of the community, uh, and the goal here is to have is to take the the excellent work that Paul has done over the last you know two years or so, uh, using uh, a quite old version of Transmart, uh, coupled to uh, the, the current version of I2B2, and really get that upgraded, and then um, something that that could be deployed uh, outside of his lab. Uh, and so the team has been working, uh, doing a lot of analysis uh, of the platform uh, and um, <clears throat> really uh, taking a, a hard look at uh, a number of the, the architectural elements, some of the things that are in the 17.1 release as well, uh, but really focusing on bringing uh, the 16.2, 16.3 version uh, into his, uh, his combined platform and then making this available. Uh, I know he's presented this a number of times. Uh, and it's uh, you know the, the it's an, an exciting enhancement uh, and something that I think we're all really looking forward to. Uh, his team has really come you know come together. He's hired a couple of new people within the team, uh, and we're you know we're really expecting to get you know uh, our first you know kind of schedule in terms of when he thinks we'll uh, we'll have a first version and look at this. So that's um, you know it's been uh, really uh, a, a lot of good work has really been initiated now. One exciting piece is that um, Sasha uh, from the um, University of Luxembourg, who's the author of Smart R, is actually doing a sabbatical at, at Harvard right now uh, and uh, working to bring Smart R into uh, the platform as well. So, you know, we'll hear a lot more about that in the, in the coming community meetings. Okay, that's, that's it. Thanks, Rudy. So I want to um, introduce uh, Marin um, Wenberg from um, Kansas University uh, Medical Center. Um, I have to say that Kansas, there's a, there's a lot of good I2B2 implementations out there. A lot of people doing some fa fabulous things. Um, Kansas is um, is is one of the gold standards. They've um, they've done a fabulous job in rolling this out and making this available to um, to everyone in their organization that does research. Um, and one of the, the things, and I think one of the major successes of th their implementation is um, the way that they communicate um, this to their organization um, and the way that they, they offer um, training to their, um, their end users. 
Um, they're, you know, they're, they're a tricky bunch of people. Um, people that do research don't have a lot of time and they often don't use these applications. Some of them don't use them on a regular basis. So they, they need to have a, a way of making uh, materials available uh, sort of just in time. Uh, and, and these guys have just done um, a fantastic job. Um, Russ Waitman is, is, uh, um, is, is the, uh, the, the leader of that group. I'm not sure what his title is, but he is on our board of directors um, and brings a, a great perspective to, uh, to the board. So I will, um, I will turn this over to uh, Marin. Marin, you, you're on, you're on, on you. go ahead. Like Dan said, we've tried to provide a lot of training materials for our users um, because it's a self-serve model here at KU. Um, we let researchers get into I2B2 and do their own searching. Okay. Um, so we've tried to lay it out in various different ways for people to get training. Um, some people may want to come and meet with us and we offer that. Um, we also have a lot of heron videos, as you'll see on the slide, um, just some of the different topics that we've covered, and these are normally five to ten minutes long. Um, just quick little videos to show users how to search, um, you know, how to use our shared folder for queries, um, how to use the sequence of events or medication modifiers. Um, we've got an age and an age at visit, so try to break down some of those um, that information for users. Um, we also put together a training manual, which you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and in that, we kind of go through step-by-step -step of how to build queries, how to request data, um, and then what the data looks like once they get it back. Um, so we provide data to our users in um, CSV files. Um, and so it's not always the easiest for the users to clean up the data. So we've tried to give um, some examples how to use it in SQLite, um, how to load it in, and then how to clean it up. Do you want to go to the next slide, Rudy? I'm not sure what you have on there. If you want to go to our website to show the links. OK, so then we've got a couple of links here um, with our training videos and our training manual. And then on the website, we also have um, you know, information about them receiving the data and um, you know, how they can even request access to our system. Um, because for our system, if they're not a faculty member, they have to be sponsored. So we try to really walk users through that whole process. Um, so that's some of the information that we have. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Did you want to go into the, um, the link? If you want to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's. We have we have time. I, I definitely think um, going into that link so you can kind of uh, walk through. Yeah, if you want to click on the link. Yeah, so here's all of the training videos um, that to teach users how to actually search in Heron, so how to use the search by codes, um, the timeline and demographic plugins they can use there. Um, a lot of people want to look at patients who've been in the emergency department, so I just made a quick video on how to find, you know, the best way that, to find the emergency room. Um, like I said, the medication modifiers, how to search on that. Um, defining sequence of events often confuses users. Um, so we tried to kind of walk through the logic and how to set up those queries. And then the shopping cart is for when they actually want to request data, how they can get all the data that they want. Um, and then I just went over some basics in the demographic folder. And then the same financial encounter and independent searching as well as just some general how to use to be too. Um, if you click on the Heron link on the side, there's a drop down uh, further to the left. Okay. 
There it is. And pink. Uh, yep, there you go. So there's all of our pages. So we've got an introduction page, the facts. Um, yeah, so that shows the introduction shows that access to Heron, the analysis tools, how to request data, and then the FAQ page. Um, just go through some questions and answers. Sorry? And then, I don't know if you want to take a look at the manual, but we've got, you know, it's about a 40 page, 35, 40 page manual um, explaining how to, you know, how to search in, in I2V2 and then explaining the data. We've also got on there, if you click on the receiving data, um, we give our data, we give um, a subset of the data in REDCap. It's kind of like a summarized version. Um, so we made this video to go through um, what the users would be getting in that REDCap project um, and really explaining that it's just a summary of the data. And then um, if you scroll down, you'll see that um, these are some of our videos on using SQLite. Um, so that's how we recommend our users clean up the data. Um, but most don't have a background in any kind of programming language. So I've tried to make it um, so that anyone can go in load the data, and then learn a few basic commands to kind of transform their data from a long skinny um, to their analytic data set. And so gone through some different things that a lot of our users want to look at, like how to use date windows, um, you know, how to get a yes, no column of does this person have diabetes, yes or no. Um, and then the final video is just how to join all the tables together. Um, so then they can import it into SAS or SPSS. Lauren, do you find a lot of, of people like accepting to like learn SQLite? I mean, I know you've got you definitely got some um, technical people and biostats people and stuff like that that are you know of course you know uh, fluent in that. But your typical um, research support staff are they jumping in and actually using that? We've had a couple of people jump in. Um, for the most part, they don't want to jump in though. Um, so sometimes they'll hire us to clean up their data um, or sometimes they'll just decide that they're going to go back and do um, chart reviews or somehow more manually clean up the data um, so we've definitely had a couple of users jump in and that's one of my goals for this next year is to figure out how to get even more people ready and able to jump in and use SQLite how to make it a little bit more accessible um, but yeah that's something that we're we're still working on because not a lot of people want to jump in, but Russ does teach a class um, once a year for medical students or PhD students, um, and they start with getting data and then they learn how to use SQLite to clean it up. Um, so this past year we had about eight students, and so they all took their project from beginning to end and used SQLite to clean it up. But you, you also provide a, a fee-for-service offering to, to clean it up for them. Um, we do. We do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you, you click on the Heron, if you hover over the Heron link again, you'll see on the, at the very bottom, it's the Heron fishing trips. So um, we have some of our old fishing trips online. Those are all-day workshops that we've been leading. Um, which go through, you know, how to do the searches and try to go more in depth in those, in those tutorials. So we do try to offer a variety of different platforms for, uh, for training. We try to have the in-person trainings. We have a lunch and learn every other week that uh, users can drop in and have pizza. Um, and then we also, you know, have these once a year longer training workshops. And then we've made a lot of online. Online tutorials. Um, we also have training resources available within I2B2 itself. There's a there's an I2B2 help, and then we've also included a a specific Heron help um, with some more.
information. Do you have anything else you want me to show, Diane? No, I think um, I think this is really great. I, I know um, Russ was going to join, but it doesn't look like he's joined yet. So I was going to ask him if he had any comments. Um, I guess we we could open it up um, for questions. I do at the end. I do want to have an open discussion about some other kind of thoughts and things like that. But um, let's open it up for uh, questions um, for Marin. Uh, if you have a question, you can enter it into the question window. Uh, you could put it in the chat window or raise your hand uh, on the, the dashboard. I don't see any. Okay. I, um, I just want to mention, um, I think that, that these tools are going to be a, a bit, making these available to people are going to be really, really important. Um, I do want to figure out how we incorporate some um, I2B2 training sessions in our um, our monthly training um, webinar series. So I, um, Maren, I hope, I hope you'll, you'll be part of that and help us kind of drive that. I think a lot of the um, materials you've probably already developed um, that just can be, you know, can be shown once a month, so it shouldn't be a heavy lift. But I think um, I think this is going to be really terrific. Sure, I'm happy to help out wherever I can. So just one more. Any other questions for anybody? I don't see anything. I don't, I don't see anything that's coming. There's a hand up, Rudy. Carmelo. Okay. Okay, you're unmuted. Colonel, you can ask a question. Hi. Yes. The question is, uh, what's the for somebody who is uh, who is considering this, deploying this, uh, what's the best way to start and uh, to have a plan to to understand the feasibility and uh, what resources available? I think it, it's uh, this presentation has been helpful and what's on the website. But what's the best way to plan? Uh, how to do this to implement something like this? I know that question is too broad, but I, I think these are wonderful resources. But um, uh, from your experience, uh, um, what's the best way to explore the feasibility of implementing uh, I2B2 Transmart for a network uh, use case using genomics data? I mean, are you, talk, are you talking about implementing uh, um, I2B2 and Transmart and getting started with the initial implementation? Yes. Okay, that's a that's a really good question. Um, and and actually, this that could be something that uh, a session that we could put kind of put together um, and, and ask for somebody to help us kind of you know understand how you start to think about this because there's a lot of pieces to it. You know, it's. I mean, it's implementing the the application, and then all of the uh, work that has to go into um, ETL, extracting the data from the various sources, and integrating it into the application. So it's it's a it's a long process. So I I, I hear what you're saying. It's something we can you know we can focus on. Yeah, we've we, this is Rudy. I mean, we we've put some effort on the Transmart side uh, on this. So. There are in the training uh, website. You can get some overviews uh, of the of the platform, uh, sort of a getting started uh, in terms of how to use uh, the platform. The other thing that we have implemented, there is a uh, kind of a one-click install. So if you just want to install a local instance on your, um, you know, on your own personal site, um, you can you do that one click and you end up with uh, a version of Transmart installed. Uh, it, it might take about half an hour or so, and, and uh, you know there, there are a few steps there, but it's all laid out. Uh, and then once you have that, there are around 150 data sets uh, that are publicly available that you can then use to load uh, and just to, to play with the, the system and, and get you know get a little more familiarity with what it can do. 
uh, of course, when it comes to loading your own data, you go, you, you know, then you go back to the, you know, the, the process that you have to go through to get the data in shape and, and do the, the loader. But there are, you know, uh, several loaders available. Uh, and I think there are some training videos on uh, using some of the data loaders as well. So, you know, we've tried to make it as easy as we can for on the Transmart side. We put some some uh, focus on that. So that, that's, uh, you know, another alternative for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm interested in it to, to develop a network, which makes the things much more complex because it's going to involve multiple institutions and big data, such sure. as data. So yeah. I look at the website and I'm familiar with Trans Transmart. I know also other company who uses such as the Trinetics, uh, similar to this. I work in other projects with I2B2, sure. but I2B2 combined with Transmart and the big data, that poses significant challenges. Yeah. And I was wondering if it's uh, because it because it, the nature of the, the use case, the project uh, involves multiple institutions. So a plan should be proposed uh, addressing the feasibility of each institutions to deploy this and be part of a network using I2B2 transfer which I think, if I understand it correctly, that would be a great platform for supporting a network for sharing data and collaborating in research. Um, but I, I need a plan. I needed to put together a plan, a feasibility plan, so I can propose that to the network members and give them a sense if that's uh, feasible or not. Uh, and I What's cannot... Yeah, it's it's definitely feasible, right? I mean, it, but it is as you as you recognize, you know, it is a, a large project, and so, you know, it's something that that we could talk about. You know, there are a number of vendors who actually do that, uh, who who might be able to, you know, help you out. So, um, maybe we could talk about that offline. Sure, and I'm exploring that as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's great. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Marin, very much. And um, we want to go to the next slide. Let's let's kind of kick it off into the open discussion. Um, we we want to we definitely want to hear from you. One of the things that we were thinking about is you know, we have like a, a monthly training programs, but we were thinking about like what if. What if there was like a you know a particular topic that a lot of people were interested in, and we just had a session where we brought an expert, you know, uh, an expert, and, and even to to um, to the the last speaker, somebody that knows about how to build networks, and you just bring together people with an expert, and you just have like an open conversation. Um, are there specific things that does that resonate with anyone? Are there specific um, areas and topics that that are just you know difficult that you'd want us to bring a couple of experts together and we had we would have an open um, platform to to discuss or 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 anything else you want to talk about this is this is an open discussion this is for um this is for you all to to bring up anything you'd like us to um to think about Don't see any hands. We're doing everything right. <laughs> Must be. We are. Um, you know, I would mention that you know we're we're still um, looking at the different events for the year. Uh, we, we know our big meeting at uh, at Harvard Medical School. Mm -hmm. Diane mentioned later in June. Um, we we have signed up for the the trimolecular meeting in San Francisco in a couple of weeks, and and we may actually uh, still go there um, with uh, you know in conjunction with a couple of our partners. Um, and similarly for BioIT World, you know what what sort of presence you know makes sense for that. Um, we have had a suggestion, and I think we are going to uh, do something around Open Bell um, and try to have a, a session, you know, a, a, a foundation session around Open Bell and and get that. 
kind of relaunched again uh, because there is, you know, certainly growing interest. Um, but, um, you know, there, there's a number of ideas of things that we could be doing and um, bringing, you know, again, places where we can bring the community together that makes sense. Uh, obviously, AMIA, where uh, by 2 b 2 has been present uh, over the years, you know, and we're, we're really looking to, to hear, you know, from from you, you know, what what's a, what types of these meetings do we want us to be at? What types of, you know, other information do you want us to to, to try to bring together? Um, you know, and hackathons and datathons and, and whatever. So, you know, really trying to get, you know, some sense of, um, you know, what types of things would, would really be helpful, you know, in, uh, you know, evolving the platforms, but also helping you use them and, uh, you know, get them deployed in your, you know, your, you know, in your user groups. Um, so, you know, even the, the question of an open bell working group, you know, really makes a lot of sense, for example. And so, you know, I'd like to, to propose that, you know, if there's interest there, that's something that we would certainly be very happy to, to, to start to, to also add to our list. So if anybody, um, if they have, if you have suggestions, um, if you, you know, can make them now or you think about them later, you can... You know, email us. You can. Um, there's a spot on our website. Uh, we just have a, a link here from um, this slide that you can go and and um, and let us know what you're thinking about. Um, we have we have a number of you know we've got the June meeting. We've got these monthly calls. You know, we're trying to put together training, so we have a lot of uh, opportunities to plug in uh, topics into uh, into different places. So you know, please let us know. We're we're here for you. Any any other thoughts? Rudy, do you have any other uh, comments? Otherwise, we can let folks um, have a couple minutes back to the other day. No, I think you know we're you know I think there there are a number of, of things here that um, you know we need to, to get focused on. I think the open bell comments were you know that we've gotten a couple of comments here that were, um, were were quite interesting, and so you know setting up that open bell working group and having an initial organizing meeting uh, would actually be quite useful. So we'll get some notes out about that. Um, but no, I think that's, that's mainly it. Um, you know, the, we're, we're trying to keep the website up to date and, and, you know, what events we're, you know, we are attending and what we're, you know, we're, we're going to be, um, you know, focusing on. And so, um, you know, please, please check there. Uh, yeah. I think that's the main point. Great. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we hope to um, to see you next month. <laughs>